Hey Canon Knights, welcome back for the first Halo Canon Q&A video in a long, long while. I'm excited to be doing this again, so let's not waste any time and jump right in. Cerebral Cloud asks, Q&A, whatever happened to the Yan Maya after the Human Covenant War? This is actually a pretty great place to start and a fairly interesting topic. Unlike many Covenant species, the Yan Maya, or drones, weren't forcibly integrated into the Covenant, but actually signed a treaty with them after a brief war. To sum things up, the Prophets of the time thought that there were Forerunner artifacts on the Yan Maya's homeworld, but couldn't afford to fight a war with the species due to the Yan Maya vastly outnumbering them. And so, when the Covenant broke up, most Yan Maya just went home to Neprit. However, we did see some as part of Merg Vol's Covenant in 2554 in Spartan Assault, and Julem Dama's Covenant in 2557, Spartan Strike. So there may still be a few hanging out with Covenant Remnants. But again, most went home and the UNSC generally tries not to poke the hive. Pun intended. I'd love to see 343 dive into the NMAA post-war at some point though, even just a little to explain how all these buggers got home. Slick I have no choice, I had to add a last name, asks, Q&A, do you think Halo Infinite will have named weapons? I'm assuming by this you mean named weapons like we have in Warzone with Halo 5. I'm not too sure, honestly. It all really depends on whether we get Warzone or a Warzone-type mode in Infinite. Otherwise, I can't see much reason for 343 to dedicate the resources to weapon variants. At best, assuming no Warzone, we might see a handful of named weapons, but even that feels like a stretch. But hey, we'll see. Umbra Shadow Cry asks, Q&A, do you think that the composing process can be perfected at some point in Halo's future? Maybe to defeat the Prometheans? I just want to see it be possible for people to transfer their essence into data and rematerialize into metal monsters. Could it be? Sure, if the story demanded it, but I don't think it will be. In universe, it's all based on precursor neural physics, which forerunners at their height only barely understood, to speak nothing of whether 26th century humanity is even capable of understanding it. Something pretty intelligent like a precursor maybe would have to come along for the composition process to be perfected, if it even can be. I don't know, maybe the Flood could complete it and then the UNSC steals it somehow? Uh, I don't know. Shadow Paradox asks, What is the funniest moment in non-game Halo lore? Funniest is a hard one, but some funny moments include Kelly 087 flipping the bird to a sentinel in Ghost of Onyx, Veda Lopez using Fred 104 as a toboggan in Halo Last Light, or just about anything the Didact says or does in the Forerunner saga. Like, when he's awoken from his cryptum and finds himself on Earth unexpectedly, he mopes around for two bloody weeks, saying nothing to anyone. Or one of my favorite quotes, It's tough to survive an exploding ship in one's underwear. I've linked to a Twitter post below from Harspice with some absolutely choice quotes and happenings from the Forerunner saga. It's an absolute comedic masterpiece. Taylor Burleson asks, Q&A, if the UNSC were to get a melee weapon, what do you think it would be and do I have any ideas? Me, I as in me, not Taylor. Anyway, sorry. I'd love to see the machete from the early versions of Halo, aka the knife and the old difficulty symbols. If not that, then maybe some kind of piston power melee gauntlet, or maybe a stun gauntlet? It's hard to say. Making melee weapons for a military like the UNSC is kind of hard. <laughs> At least off the top of my head. Harrow's Dawn asks, Q&A, in Halo Wars 2, Professor Anders states how the Ark always contains an extra Halo ring. Does this mean the Ark always has a ring in place, or is one manufactured after one is damaged slash destroyed, or does it mean the same thing? This is something I actually brought up in part 3 of my Halo Wars Breakdown series, which I've linked below if you want to watch it. At one point my headcanon was that Anders misspoke not fully understanding the Ark's functions. If the Ark always kept an almost finished Halo ring in its forge, then the issue of firing the unfinished Installation 08 in Halo 3 wouldn't have been an issue. If it always kept an almost finished ring, why wasn't it finished within three months? At best, maybe the Ark keeps a skeleton, if you will, at all times, but almost finished, that just... that just creates too many issues. I have to think that, again, Anders just didn't fully understand what she was saying. Lifeworker Central asks, Q&A, what's your favorite Forerunner rate? Miners, Lifeworkers, Warrior Servants, Prometheans, or Builders? Putting me on the spot, huh? Damn. Well, I'm going to have to go with Theoreticals, if only to keep up my hipster reputation. But in all seriousness, the extinct rate of Theoreticals is a fascinating one I'd love to learn more about someday. 
And for anyone who hasn't read the Forerunner Saga or doesn't remember, this rate were basically the scholars of ancient Forerunner society. But then one of them discovered something they shouldn't and they were wiped out and absorbed into the builders. So, as you do. Anaconda4LH asks, Q&A, citing the Forerunner trilogy and Halo CEA terminals, the Halos can have their range not only limited, but also tuned to any target. Do you think the plot of Halo Infinite may include an activation of Installation 07 by Cortana to destroy opposing forces in a key system, or alternatively, the Master Chief tuning the Halos to destroy the Guardians? Before I answer, allow me a brief correction. The older, larger 12-ring array, the Senescent array, could alter their range, but the final array, the Neoteric array, could not. Although Installation 07, being that it is from the original array, might retain the ability to alter its range, but we really don't know at this time. Anyway though, while Halo 5 does give the impression that Cortana wants to use the Halos, I don't think she plans to use them in the way they were primarily intended to be used. In Halo Escalation during the next 72 hours storyline, it seemed like the Didact was planning to use Installation 03 as a giant composer, so I can imagine the Halo rings being repurposed in different ways we might not yet realize. As for use against the Guardians, though, that sadly wouldn't work. Guardians are machines and don't use neural physics in any manner, so they'd be completely unharmed by the Halo effect. And again, for anyone who hasn't read the Forerunner saga, neural physics was a special kind of physics used by Precursors. It's really crazy and Lovecraftian shit. But basically, it was the stuff that held Precursor artifacts together and was unfortunately susceptible to the Halo Array, so when the Halo Array went off, all the neural physics stuff just fell apart. Radiation, in Leet Speak, asks, Q&A, favorite Spartan and why? Fred104, witty, loves knives, jack-of-all-trades kind of guy. What's there not to love? Banished Fox asks, Q&A, do you think the Tavawans should be in the newer games as they are seen both post-war and, quote-unquote, helping human scavengers as seen in Halo Smoke and Shadow? Any way we can get more enemy classes into games is a win for me, so I'd be more than on board with bringing the skirmishers back. Although, while I did say enemies, bringing them back as allies would be pretty cool too, especially with the created storyline going on. Kevin Cool X asks, Q&A, what is the status of the Sunghealy Civil War? It was touched on in Halo 5, but not explained at all. I believe it's about staying with the Covenant versus leading own path kind of thing, right? So yes, that's the basic gist of things. The Arbiter and his Swords of Sunghelios want to establish a new Sunghelios society, one more progressive, open to new ideas, and above all, one that seeks peace with humanity and the greater galaxy. Others had, let's say, different ideas. Now, there are a number of factions that oppose the Arbiter, but the biggest one and most powerful was Julem Damas, the one we see in Halo 4 and Halo 5. Halo 5 shows the end of that faction and the victory of the Swords of Sunghelios. If the Guardians hadn't awakened, while the fighting wouldn't be completely over, the Arbiter would most definitely have control of Sung Helios, which by and large means control of Sung Heli society. Speaking on the broader conflict though, the Blooding Years, the civil conflict between 2553 and 2558, is still largely undeveloped and is a period I would love to see 343 dive into. Admiral Alex1000 asks, Q&A, just how long do plasma weapons last between charges? and just how effective are they against the Flood. I remember a line from Halo 2 about how they would have brought weapons to burn the bodies, as each could have been a host for the Flood, but plasma burns flesh and tissue. So should the standard plasma rifle slash pistol be enough to destroy any body the Flood could use for biomass? Plasma weapons largely seem to work how we see them work in games. So the battery seems largely unused when the weapon isn't active. I guess the Covenant, if nothing else, have mastered batteries. As to the second part of your question, while in-game plasma weapons aren't that effective against the Flood, in-universe they really should be. We've seen numerous instances of plasma from Covenant weapons melting through armor and flesh with ease, so it should be pretty effective against the Flood, at least one would think. Although having specific weapons to burn bodies is probably more efficient than using just your standard plasma weapon. Ross Graham asks, Q&A, who would win in a fight, Jummy Xperia or reality itself? This isn't even a question. Jummy, of course, would win. All he has to do is observe it and the whole thing collapses. That's a physics joke. K asks, Q&A. I know I have pestered this numerous times before, but here it goes. Will you ever do reviews of Halo Legacy of Onyx and Halo Retribution? In my opinion, they were good reads, especially Legacy of Onyx. Well, after all your pestering, no, I'm never going to do it. 
I kid, I will. After Halo Renegades, we have a good period of no new books for a while, at least at the moment, so during that period, I plan to knock out Retribution first, then Legacy of Onyx, and then hopefully I'll be all caught up. Oh God. Lawan Petrick Miranda uh, Marl asks, and I hope I said all that right, Q&A, do you think the Usans from Broken Circle may have contact with the Swords of Sung Helios? Most definitely. We know some decided to return to Sung Helios, so there's no doubt that they would have encountered the Swords at some point. I can even imagine a few of them joining the Arbiter's fight, which would be really cool if we could get that referenced in a game. Young Vulpix asks, Q&A, is the MA-5B's caliber and mag size from CE considered canon? People have pointed it out before that the MA series assault rifles are all chambered in 7.62 by 51 mm NATO rounds, and there's no way a Stanag style magazine of the size shown in game and other media would hold 60 rounds that caliber. It'd have to be more like a C-Mag style drum magazine. So to be blunt, yes, it is canon, and yeah, the magazine shown definitely wouldn't hold 60 rounds. It's kind of just another instances of big things fitting in small packages through unknown means. Other Zinc asks, Q&A, tell us about Spartan 458? Spartan Nicole 458, supposedly from a Class 2 of Spartan 2, gets sent back in time along with Orbital Platform to South Station, and is a TOTAL weeb. Seriously though, her canon status remains pretty unknown at this point. She's not actually part of Spartan 2 Class 2 because Class 2 never happened. If she were to come into the canon, she'd fit right in as a Spartan 3 of Alpha Company though. Alpha had 497 candidates, so 458 would fit right in. Her birth year doesn't really match up, but everything we have on Nicole is from DOA, so things could get changed if necessary. I'll be talking more about her in an upcoming video about Spartan 2 Class 2, so stay tuned for that. And by the way, I hope you enjoyed this footage of Nicole. I suffer through the entire story mode of DOA 4 to capture it. Five hours of the worst AI in fighting game history. Okay, long one. Boldfaced Broom 3 asks, Q&A. This is a speculative question because I've been wondering about it ever since I heard about Gen 3 Mjolnir. I've had this feeling that Halo 3 and Halo Reach implied that Mark 5 and Mark 6 were just considered platforms for different armors, Chiefs Mark 5 and 6 being the base variants. Then Gen 2 came along and gave me a little bit of confusion at first, but I've come to the conclusion that Gen 2 is just very fluid in nature, with no real Mark system despite it having its own versions of Mark 4, Mark 5, and Mark 6 armors. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Now this leads me to the final point in this loaded question, seeing how Gen 3 will look back to Gen 1 for its protective capabilities, do you think that they will reintroduce a Mark system, and if so, how do you believe is the most likely way they would execute it? Will they refit Mark 4, Mark 5, and Mark 6, kinda obvious that last one, for Gen 3? Will they continue where Gen 1 left unfinished and bring Mark 7 to Gen 3 and continue there? Or will they start out fresh in Mark 1 and look at Gen 1 Mark 6 for design inspiration? So there's a lot going on here, and I'm gonna try and sum it up quickly. The Mark system used by Gen 1 was implemented by the UNSC to make budgeting easier for them during the war. By the time of Gen 2, between improved manufacturing and development after almost 30 years, and a much higher demand with the Spartan 4 program, the new platform was able to implement a spiral development model, with new iterations of armor and upgrades able to be rolled out almost as soon as they were ready, something much harder to do with Gen 1's Mark system. And to address the Marks 4, 5, and 6 briefly, their baseline models and certain variants were ported to Gen 2. Basically, this means you take the old suits, give them a few upgrades so they fall in line with the new platform, and slap them on a new undersuit. For Gen 3, I think it's likely we'll see the Spiral Development model return, or rather would have had it made to final production. Given that Gen 3 was still in early prototype stages as of October 2558, whatever we see in Infinite, if it is Gen 3, which it seems likely, would likely be closer to Skunk Works prototypes. But whatever the case, I don't think we'll see the Mark system return in any formal manner. Just, again, ported variants of previous Marks. Incidentally though, if you want to learn more about Mjolnir and how all that works, I actually have a video on it called UNSC Armaments Mjolnir. Link in the description and at the top right. Swampass asks, Q&A, what weapons and vehicles would you like to see return in Halo Infinite that wasn't in the previous game Halo 5? Mine would be the Chopper, Revenant, Hornet, Focus Rifle, Brute Shot, and many more. So you kinda named the best ones on that list. Especially the Brute Shot and Focus Rifle, and I'd also like to see the Mauler return. I love weapons that aren't just alien reskins of human weapons, and same goes for vehicles. So Chopper and Revenant would definitely be on my list. Hornet too, if only because you can have people ride it, which is great for objective games. 
Oh, and let's drop the Storm Rifle and bring back the Plasma Repeater from Halo Reach. It's a great visual upgrade of the Plasma Rifle with a strong design and I'd love that venting feature it had. Fantastic weapon. Nathan Wright asks, Q&A, do you think we'll ever see an in-universe explanation for the different marine armors seen throughout the series? Maybe, eventually, but probably not anytime soon, I don't think. Which is unfortunate, because I'd love to hear those explanations. Know what each BDU was meant for when they entered service, etc. A lot you could dive into there. DevJoe27 asks, Q&A, how did Alpha 9 get off reach? There's a joke in there, but I'm not going to say it. But seriously, unfortunately, there's no clear answer. Buck and the Alpha 9 of the time evacuated New Alexandria on August 23rd and were evacuated from Reach sometime after. If I were to guess, they likely ended up evacuating closer to the final invasion on August 30th, but as I said, there's no clear answer. Maybe in time we'll get that, but yeah. And finally, Tristan Bradbury asks, Q&A, what do you think the big announcement for MCC will be at the event in March? And honestly, it could be anything. I'd like to hope for Reach being added to MCC, or MCC coming to PC, or maybe even something slightly more realistic. ODST Firefight being added, maybe with matchmaking. That would be a dream. Or, hell, maybe some more maps for Halo 2 Anniversary. That'd be fantastic. Realistically, though, maybe a Halo 2 Anniversary tournament or something. But we won't have to wait too much longer to see, will we? And I think that's a good place to cut things off. Not every question was answered or could be answered without making this video much, much longer and making you wait for it that much longer. So I hope you all understand. Questions were selected at random, so no bias was applied, I absolutely promise. Overall, I had a lot of fun reading through everyone's questions and answering those selected. But of course, I want to know what you thought. Let me know in the comments below and if you have ideas for improvements, let me know about that too. I always want to improve and make a better quality product for y'all. I don't want to promise a date for the next Q&A, but let's get those questions rolling nonetheless. Once again, if you have a question, any question, leave a comment below that starts with Q&A with the ampersand, followed by the question or questions. And so that does it for now. Thanks for watching, thanks for asking, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canonites.